Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Anthony Monteith from Cup of Chi. I think I'm episode 22, but it's been a few months since we did one. And But I've been thinking and agonizing, should I continue the podcast? And then blessings arrive because this chap is a living legend. He is the closest thing you can ever get to China in Europe. So uh, I want to introduce you to you. I've only met him once, the Celestino Wang. But we met, uh, I had a friend come over to do his his thing, and we met Celestino there, and I could tell when he spoke, he spoke a lot of wisdom. So I'm blessed to have him with us. Thank you for joining us, Celestino. Could you Thank tell you, our people that are watching this a little bit about yourself, where your journey <laughs> began, and what you're up to at the moment? Well, thanks a lot, Anthony, for, for inviting me to Cup of Tea. Uh, I think this is a, a honor and a very good opportunity to be with you here. Uh, my name is Salustino, Salustino Thaldivar Wong. Uh, I was born in Cuba, Havana, uh, 51 years ago. Um, when I was uh, 21, 22 years old, I left the country to China to study Chinese medicine, where I studied my undergraduate studies, my master degree and my PhD. Uh, All together were 13 years. Uh, at the university. Then I spent some time around in the hospitals and following some teachers, masters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the the journey was amazing. It changed my life for a Cuban, for a little Cuban that I was. You know, I grew up there in China, and that was really something that you know I didn't expect in life. You know, in Havana, there it was so different. But uh, it was really amazing. In, in that journey, I met a lot of very interesting people, I should say. And I met uh, my teachers, uh, uh, especially uh, my teacher of uh, Jing Fan, Professor Huang Huan. And uh, also I met uh, special people of Tuina, my Tai Chi also like a lot of my, the, the Tai Chi trend. And um, I did a lot of work on, on that also. So yeah, this is more or less. It's a I... big journey. It's a big journey. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of slightly jealous. I, I wish that my... Uh... Don't be, don't be. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that it's not always been romantic. And you know, I have, I have friends who have lived in China like 10 years, 13 years, 25 years. And, you know, the struggle is it's not that easy, is it, in the beginning? And uh, you do have to make a lot of adjustments. Now, you could say that with any country. Um, I, myself, have only visited backwards and forwards. I've never had a chance to really immerse myself in that culture. Um, I was exposed to Japanese, Chinese, Korean medicine at a, at a young age. But I want to tell you a story. It's a really interesting one, just to put it in context. Yeah. We are, we are a similar age, give, give or take a few months. And... Um, when I was about, 11, no, I'm going to say 11 years, 12 years old, we start secondary school, and I used to receive handwritten and, t- and typed newsletters from my godparents who had moved to China in 1980, oh. and China was going through that uh, shift yeah. a little bit because there'd been the death of uh, Mao Zedong, and then moving into the next phase and then it, well, they weren't quite sure where they were going to go it was almost yeah. like for two years there was this element of freedom and people used to like smoke cigars and listen to jazz and it was kind of a crazy time for about a year in china and they were living there in beijing he was working uh with the railroads uh demonstrating what was possible with diesel engines and things like that and they lived there for five years and they used to send these newsletters And I'm going to try and find them at some point before we meet again to to, to share with you some of the stories. But it was like, you know, when when you read something and then you visualize how China is and you have this vision of like minus 30 degrees in winter and kids have a slip down their bum so they can squat to do a poo and, you know, and all this kind of stuff and riding bicycles everywhere and eating like hanging up their cabbage on a shop on a washing line to dry it out yes all these things that happened eating rats they had to like uh, breed a rat breeding program all this yeah. kind of stuff and you think wow what a completely different but fascinating culture and then they sent me an, a little 
Chinese newsletter about this big, and it was half, it was a cultural production. I, I wish I could find it. It's a little book, and it was a book about Wushu, and in it was a character or a, a young boy called Li Lianji, and that turned out to be Jet Li, I believe. And yes. um, it was pictures of him, like, you know, 10 years old, 12 years old, you know, doing his moves. And I was like, wow. Then I went into the martial arts. For me, it was limited. We only had access to kickboxing or Korean martial arts. Um, later on, I discovered Kung Fu for a friend, uh, Lao Gar Kung Fu. And he is now a famous film star. He's been in Ip Man 4. And we're fr- well, we were friends. I don't think he... He, he, he'll remember me anymore but it's really interesting how I was drawn to China and when I first went I brought my wife and we were sat at the back of the bus coming off the plane and she said she elbowed me and she said you're not excited come on you're in China you've always wanted to be here and I went no nah, I'm not excited because I knew I was coming from the age of 11 so it was going to happen I felt that draw to the country and I only got lost once in the country and it was stressful, but uh, I really enjoyed being there. I enjoyed the people. And I think people don't understand how different people are in China compared to when some of them migrate and go to other countries. There's, I feel like there's a, there are different kind of, maybe that's just my own, my own reflection of where I was, but I found them to be a lot more open than I expected and uh, shared quite a lot. Once you put the effort in, once you you show dedication, did you find any struggles in your uh, in your learning? Did you were there any things that you had to overcome, language barriers, things like that? Yeah, I think that uh, well, I, I first should say that Chinese people in 1995 is way different from Chinese in 2023. So at that time in 1995, that was the year that I went there. Uh, people were so open and so gentle. They were they were very gentle. Chinese are very gentle people, and uh, <clears throat> they were very friendly. And it was amazing how they received me. Um, at that time, economically for me it was very hard because coming from Cuba, I didn't have any 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 money from from my country. So it was really hard uh, in the start. But uh, knowing the right people there, the Chinese people, they helped me a lot. Um, and if you really embrace the, their culture, they they are very open. You know, uh, normally most of the foreigners that go there, for them it's very difficult to enter the culture. And what they they do a lot of resistance. So they live normally in a in a bubble. I call the the international bubble. You know? So they, they live inside the bubble and they know each other and they speak in English yeah. and they don't really uh, uh, penetrate the Chinese culture, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, in, you know, for martial artists is to train every day and to be there for your shifu and to, you know, to be humble and to help in anything. You know, this is part of the Chinese culture and, and how to, to, to get into, to, to get the respect that you deserve for your work, you know. Mm. So in Chinese medicine is follow your teacher, you know, just pour the cup of tea, you know, for your teacher, you know, bring your the, his suitcase, follow him everywhere, uh, hold the, the, the trial of uh, needles, you know, respecting. So they, they will respect you if you if you really are, are devote to your art. Mm. Uh, language can be a barrier. Mm. Of course, language can be a barrier if you want to participate in the whole culture, you know, because yeah. everything in China is based on, on the characters. and the, 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 Let's say that the culture is around the, those characters and, 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 and the language. So Those characters you, behind you are much older, though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are... Uh, uh, they are called uh, Chuangshu. They are they are the oldest one. They the one that you the, the seal inscriptions that yeah. you use in the seals. Yeah. Sure you are. I don't know if you, you probably can't see it, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This are from the seal. It's yeah, a it's tals- talisman. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a, um um yeah. If you are into into all of that and you can cross that language barrier, you are you can, but. 
it's all with the hard work, with being humble, with being friendly, you know, respect the art. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that this is very important. Yeah, interesting. And like, this is where I'm going to be a little bit controversial. I know you like a bit of controversy. <laughs> all, all my friends that have lived there, and some of them have gone back to their native countries in Europe and other places, back to America. I, I And this is just my own personal interpretation. I feel that they come back almost with this idea. I don't, I don't sense this with you at all, but they come back with kind of feeling superior, like, you know, nobody in America or nobody in Ireland or UK is, is a true Chinese medicine doctor. I am because I've done 12 <laughs> years and they're kind of swanning around. But deep down when I interview them and talk to them, they're like, yeah, after 12 years, I still feel like I'm not getting the results that I truly deserve and yeah. I feel and this you can correct <laughs> me if I'm wrong because I obviously have not been on that journey no, I, you, but they the, the impression I get is that it's <clears throat> still very limited I mean it's it's a good panacea if you want to treat millions of people you know it's like a paracetamol for everybody or neurofen for everybody and that repeated sort of coming in every two days the same points the same points the same points is kind of the impression that I got. And then as I went through the medicine over sort of 20 odd years, I realized there were these shining stars within TCM that were kind of, you know, everybody went to this doctor, he's the best one. And this guy's better at Twina and this guy's better at herbal medicine. And when I'd sit down with them and, and obviously my, my Chinese is very bad, but I could, I'm a very good at reading people and I'd look at them and go, they're not doing, they're not doing TCM. They're hiding in the TCM corridor, but really they're doing some other system that I've never seen before. <clears throat> and that's why they're getting better results. Yeah, it's true, true that uh, that people, when come back to the West, most of the people uh, that have been there for even three months, you know, I know people that, you know, I have been in, I was in China for 20 years, so I yeah. saw many people yeah. coming and back, coming and back. And then I met them in, in Europe. So many people they will they they think that uh, especially in Chinese medicine that they they got everything. You know, I got the I went there three months or one year or three years or five. I got everything, so I know most of uh, most of the things, or I know more than the you know that the common people that study here in Europe. And this is this is completely wrong. And feeling superior i think is completely wrong and, and there is a lot of them that uh, feel superior especially also in martial arts mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes I, I i you know i have very good friends that don't know chinese that haven't been in china that so many years and they are amazing doctors amazing martial artists yes and uh, i don't think that you know it's just i think that uh, it's not where you were it's about who you are and how devote you you are, you know? And of course, there is a little bit of, uh, uh, you knock on the right door, you know? You open the right door and you met the right teacher, you know? That yeah. is very important. In China, that is very important. And everywhere, I think that is very important to have a, a lineage or to have a, a, the right education. This is very important. And the right education is not the TCM University in China. That is the worst thing in education that you can have. Uh, right. Here's a question for you. Do you think that some people get overly caught up in lineage? They get like, unless you're in this lineage, it's, you're not worth anything. You know, you have to honor the lineage. <clears throat> well, I'm not saying don't disrespect your ancestors. We all, as practitioners, like we are standing on the shoulder of giants is a famous Irish saying, you know, that we, I mean, every day I, I state my gratitude. Every day I have a gratitude meditation. I say, thank goodness I got injured at 24 and that injury led me to Chinese medicine. And with without that injury or that fascination in Oriental culture anyway, and that on top, it, it kind of, it was a lightning bolt. You now have to go in this direction. Um, albeit I was already treating people as a massage therapist, sports injuries and osteopathy. But um, I think that there are some people that I, I do find this. Um, 
uh, maybe it's a they have a frustration because they can't they can't go deeper into the lineage or maybe their teacher is holding back for whatever reason and then they just they just kind of go ah oh, lineage is not that important it's you know but really we should still honor that like if you are dedicating yourself like you have your life to to jing feng then you need to be able to say thank you for the creation of this do you understand i think yes. when we honor <clears throat> it, we're not honoring it and make saying it's absolute but we're honoring it as a form of gratitude and respect for all the hard work that the previous people have done. Well, um, normally, <clears throat> whatever you study in China, medicine, calligraphy, martial arts, mm. uh, philosophy, whatever, uh, you, the, the, the teaching is a master disciple. It's a relation, you know. And when you do that, there is a lineage. There should be a lineage. So, yes, I'm defending the lineage mm -hmm. thing, but you belonging to that lineage doesn't mean that you are good or that you deserve to be in that lineage. I get you. And okay. I will explain, and I will explain that. Uh, uh, a teacher, a master, have 20 students, but not, not all of them are good because some are more devote to the art than the others. And again, this is a question of how devote you are, how you respect that. I think that that is more important than the lineage per se. And at, at the same time, if you are like that, then you are you are um, respecting your lineage, you know, and you deserve to be in that lineage. And that happened uh, that happened in any in any art in China, mm -hmm. I think. So there is two two things: the lineage, because this is something that you receive, you know. But uh, at the same time, how devoted you are to those to that art, and uh, when you when you have a master, there are different kind of disciples. I'm sure that you know. Uh, that is a normal student, then a student that can come to the home, and then the student that can come inside the room, you know, yeah. and 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 so on, you know. Yeah. And this is a very important thing also because the teacher, you know, the teacher knows who are the most, the most devout, you know, in, yeah. in, in the yeah. art and so yeah. he, he will open more to, to some extent. So I think that this is important. That doesn't mean that if you are devout and you really are hardworking, you can also attain some, some kind of level, for sure. It's, 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 I think it's, it's okay. That's, yeah, that's an excellent answer. Um, what I noticed as well, and I and I have I've been guilty of this also, is <laughs> rightly or wrongly, I, I I was adamant to take on interns, you know, and I've been doing that since about 2006 and more readily since 2010. And you're you're correct, you know, people who come to train with you and initially they're super enthusiastic, they're really into it, they're there like every day, and then you start to see their character unravel a little bit and the truth starts to come out and i think in some ways like what i've witnessed in china not not in a bad way because they are generally gentle people is they almost kind of hang hang let the person hang themselves it's like you know uh where i remember i used to get disciplined a lot in the tween eye department you know my hand technique not good get this right move your wrist this way and uh, my teacher used to say that's a good thing they, it means they care. It means they care. If they keep disciplining you and make changing your arm position, yeah. they, they like you. Yeah. When they ignore you, they don't want any more to do with you. And what I yeah. noticed over time was that the, the, the troublesome students that I had, the troublemakers, I just stopped feeding them information. And eventually they, it's like, you know, you're not wasting your energy with them. You're not like, dismissing them and kicking them out you're allowing them to just leave of their own accord like they have to leave the nest and go and make their own mistakes um but um i do i do i do like that idea and i know i know for yourself you you've been pushing in europe to to get jing fang going and i think it's important for the people watching this to understand the fundamental differences between regular tcm herbalism and this particular lineage, because 
Um, I do know a few people who use it and they've kind of tried to modify it and use it for fertility and things like that and create new products from it. But could you explain the fundamentals, obviously without too many complicated uh, uh, ideas, but essentially why, where you, why you found it, how it's helped you and what kind of results have you been getting with it? Well, uh, normally we come to Chinese medicine because we think that uh, this is an ancient medicine. No? But uh, the result is that people who get uh, in the mainstream of studies, which is the university or the schools around the world, what they receive is uh, what we call the TCM, you know. And that was, uh, that was an idea, a, a complex idea that was uh, built in the 50s in the in the last century mm. and that was necessary to put many school of thought together because in china before that they, they didn't have a, a real university or, or, a school, or a standard school in the whole country so they standardized the, the the teaching but when they did that in a very short amount of, of time that system wasn't perfect and that system wasn't based on clinic so it was more like a theory, theoretical uh, body. Mm. Uh, that theoretical body has a lot of products that I won't go into that now. But uh, around the university uh, or outside of the university, uh, coexist the different school of thought. Still, you know, still there are teachers that it come from what we call a lineage. And one of the lineage always was, uh, and it's the, maybe the oldest one, is the Qin Fan. And this goes back to uh, 1,800 years ago, during Han Dynasty, where uh, at that time were compiled, and no greetings, they were compiled books that were the, uh, the classics, what we call the classics, or the canon, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, which were the Huan Tin Eiching, the Yellow Emperor book, internal uh, canon, uh, the Shendong Ben Sao Jing, which is the, the, uh, the divine agriculture pharmacopoeia, mm -hmm. and the Shanghan Lun, Shanghan mm -hmm. or Shanghan Sapindo, uh, Mai Jing, Nan Jing, and there are others, uh, yeah. classics. But uh, the, the one that was the Shendong Pen Sao Jin, the, pharma, the pharmacopoeia, and the, 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 the Shanghan Lung, which is the Jin Fan, Jin Fan stream, you could say like that. Uh, this is the only one that really uh, was keeping alive in time. You know, this is the only one that really. Now, there is a, this Japanese school of acupuncture that uh, take the Nanjing as uh, the classic. But this is something that in time, we cannot see the link between the Han Dynasty and this Japanese school in time. But uh, from Han Dynasty, we can see very consistently in all dynasties, how they wrote about the Shanghan Lung and the formulas that they, they were in the Shanghan Lung or in the Han Dynasty. So <clears throat> this is the base of all our, um, let's say uh, the, the, the use of the formulas of all herbs. So if you don't study that, mm. you don't know why this formula is like that. So to study the structure of the formula, to study the different uh, modification of the formula, you have to be expert in that, in that uh, team fact. If not, you will, you're, you're just giving uh, aspirin or uh, venerum or whatever, you know, yep. this is what you are giving to people. So this is why it's so important because you are going back to the origin. You are studying the root of the medicine. And this is the only real uh, ancient school that have been for two, uh, one, uh, 1,800 years, you know, 1,800 years, so, so like that. You can see in the different doctors in the lineage, you know, that they wrote about the clinical cases using those formulas. How, so you can study Oh. Right. So it seems to me there's a <laughs> lot more consistency over a longer period. Like in Absolutely. some of the Chinese medicine studies, they kind of jump and then make a leap and then they make a leap. Yeah. yeah. Dismiss everything that came before. Now, this is the way to do it. But what you seem to be telling me is it's close to 
1800 years of consistent results yes. and 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 if you go to the other method of uh, of uh, 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 of doing of doing internal medicine or chinese herbs uh, they are not so consistent so they are a school of the of the center of the little yuan the the pi the the, the 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 stomach and the spleen school there is the school of Trudanxi. there are different schools Yes, they are very good schools, okay, but they are not so consistent as uh, the Jin Fan school, the Shanghai Han school, which is also they are not so old uh, uh, as that. And all of those school schools are based on Jin Fan. You can see there that they are based on Jin Fan. So, for, just for for myself as well, so yes. I'll done because I'm now I'm now learning from you. Is uh, Shang Han Lun is that I believe is the treatise or the treaty on cold damage? Is that correct? Yeah, you could translate that that bit, but I know it's not accurate. Yeah, but... yeah. In my American style translation, <laughs> no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, but the Jing Fang then is a school of the Shang Han Lun, or is it a lineage of Shang Han Lun? Yeah, we call Jin Fan to the formulas that were written in the Shanghan Zaping Lu, okay. which is the original book. All right, just know? yeah, yes. just so that I am learning. I have to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, because I mean, let's be honest. Um, I can tell you now, the you know the level of exposure to herbal medicine. I had to go and find my own system. Um, I ended up studying with Master Guo. It's a body space medicine, which is a modern, nineteen ninety seven, a modern version of he created from from TCM and it's a fantastic system and I love it it's and my students love it because they can get a handle on the herb very quickly mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying it's superior to any other system but I think it's a great way of of finding out why the herbs herbs work um so so we have this 1800 year history consistent knowledge we have this then this extraction of how the herbs work so did you notice when you started learning this and you'd obviously already spent time as a doctor working over there and you started learning this, was it a sudden leap in results? Did you go, wow, now we're really getting way better results or faster or <laughs> there was just more clarity? What was yeah, it? The, the, first, the first thing is that when we studied the, in TCM, the herbs, we have, we have to study like, 500 formulas which is crazy you yeah. know yeah. and they don't they don't relate to each other you know they are classified as uh, for example uh, transforming phlegm or releasing the stereo you know this is the way of classifying yeah. it um and they don't have any relation one with other because these are many a school of thought all together you know yeah. so they don't have a relation between them and that is very difficult. You will never really understand the formulas if you study like that. Mm -hmm. Then the first thing, uh, when I met my teacher, I met my teacher in 1998, and I became his disciple in 2001. I started to study with him, and the first thing that uh, opened to me was, wow, now I understand this formula. And that formula is... Is coming from this form. Oh, okay. Now I understand. This is this is the this is the main thing that you you can, yep. you can do. You know. So then, when you relate, you know more or less. Oh, I can use this for that because the origin is here. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So this is very important to know the structure of the of the formula, to know the origin of the formula. This yeah. is really amazing. Then, the the name of Shanghai, the name of Shanghai is mm -hmm. related to uh to at that time in Han Dynasty, the fire element, the fire movement was the most important because we are we we have light because of our fire, the fire of life, no? Mm -hmm. So anything that was opposite to that, that was the yin part, the cold, you know, it will be a damage. Mm -hmm. You understand? So okay, so, uh, so, so it's the uh, fire, fire spirit, the spirits of the fire and element that keeps us vital. Are you there? No. Sorry. Uh, 
Are you there? Sorry, I lost you for a moment. I think it was my yeah. v- my VPN. Can you go again? You were like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so so yes, the fire is this vitality. You know, is the is the main thing. We function because we have that fire. So anything opposite to that, which is the cold, the north, the darkness, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is uh, is uh, is uh, related to death. You know, so yeah. the cold is is what damage our our uh, uh, our fire is what consume our fire. Anything that consume our our fire increase the 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 cold and the damage in our body. Okay, yeah. so. Controversy. Are you ready? Yes. What do you think? Why are people doing this Wim Hof and then doing cold plunges and jumping in the cold sea? Are they not damaging their fire? Uh, or do you think there's a constitutional thing that we have to consider that not everyone... There are, there are, there, yes, there are different things that we have to consider. First, the constitution. Uh, the second thing is that uh, there is uh, something that is called Hormesis, which is what uh, he's doing, Wim Hof. So by Hormesis is an adapting process of the body. So if you expose your body to uh, extreme conditions, he will try to adapt. So uh, by you uh, exposing him to the cold, then uh, mitochondria will produce more ATP and then you will use, uh, you will produce more energy. No, uh, This is more or less what is behind the, that. Uh, but in Chinese medicine, <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, that when you expose the body to cold, you know, and you, of course, uh, Wim Hof, he do a, a preparation for that, mm-hmm. the breathing preparation, and that yeah. part is very important, I think, you know, because when you do the breathing, then you're moving your yang, and you, uh, it's the metal, it's the metal of the lung, that the one that, um, uh, make the fire descend, which is the movement of that the fire should do. When you expose the, um, to the body to cold, the fire also will go inside. He will go inside to protect himself. Yeah. And uh, from that point of view, it could be good. You know, it could yeah. be good. But uh, is it a short-term solution or do you think it, for but, some some people but, can long-term help. But we don't know in the long term, we still don't know what will happen to those people. Yeah. And what I will, what, uh, you know, I go to Estonia to work where the, 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 the water is very cold in the yeah. shower, you know. So I try, I try in my head, in the, in the arms, you know, but I never would put cold water on my waist, on the kidneys, but... Mm-hmm. This is the only the only place that I, I won't do it, mm-hmm. and I think that comes from our protect you know the fire that is there you know yeah, protect the, 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 the your kidneys you know it, will, it shouldn't be exposed to the to the cold mm-hmm. and but um, but I don't know in the long run what could happen to those people that expose them to to to, to long time in the cold you know okay. Um, this I don't know. We don't know. Yeah, and I, I agree. Yeah, we don't know. That. It's it's you know it's 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 like a uh, it's become almost a fashion, and I have nothing against it because I think people, at least during that that strange COVID lockdown, people were were finding solutions. Right. I mean, I um, I was treating a young chap yesterday, and he said, you know, before COVID, every weekend in the pub drinking beer, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And now he goes out into nature with the same friends. They swim in nature. They take shower, hot showers, cold showers, saunas. They 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 uh, they go mountain biking. And that now is their weekend. And he said it literally was. It took that two years for them to realize. Oh, you know, I, it, it, it's almost like being in isolation forced them to really go in and look at themselves. Mm. So I think there's been a lot of good stuff. Uh, mm. you know, obviously everything's in balance all the time. We just don't recognize it, right? Yeah. So initially all the filters are on the bad, but it's forcing people internally to look at themselves and transform. Um, 
and those um, there are those unfortunate people who couldn't couldn't do that for whatever reasons. But um, I, I am I was always a little bit more wary of the cold water immersion. Now that could be because I was born in South Africa. I thought the water in South Africa is actually quite cold to see, but mm. I always felt like I like to be in some ambient warmth. It's now the sun is shining today in Ireland, and I feel way happier. My mood is elevated. Yes. Uh, the yang <laughs> is rising. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, I don't know if you know anything about this. I'm sure you do. Uh, one of my tween R students is studying um, stems and branches. Mm-hmm. And she did like a chart on me, which I can share later on. You can have a look at it. And uh, she said, um, "My the 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 elements that are empty in the chart. I'm not saying that they're not there, but just according mm-hmm. to that birth time or whatever, mm-hmm. is uh, the heart and the pericardium. So th- for me, that's kind of now. She says it's not an issue. It's just something you have to work with. Um, and it explains a lot <laughs> for me." Yeah. Because I'm quite, I'm always pushing to be, wear my heart on my sleeve, be authentic. It's like mm-hmm. I am trying very hard to fill in that uh, deficiency, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, I am, I've been very young most of my life, liked a good fight, you know, and um, ended up suffering with a lot of migraines, headaches because that. Yeah, young, rising. rising. And when I was last in China, I met a herbalist. I was introduced to a herbalist. And he said, how long are you going to be in China? And I said, well, I can only be here for a few weeks. And he says, no, I really need you to be here for three months because I can't fix you. But, you know, I was like, I'm sorry, I can't stay. I have family and things to do. And he said, okay, well, I do the best that I can in these few weeks. And I ended up drinking, I think it was around 20 liters of a herbal decoction. Now, because I was staying in uh, like a, an accommodation where there was no facilities, I, I asked them to prep it and cook it for me. Mm-hmm. And I went to the the pharmacy, and uh, they looked at me like I was had a you know I was crazy uh, because when they lifted up, you know, twenty liters is you know twenty kgs right or more, yeah. thirty kgs of herbs in in, in liquid. I had my backpack and I filled up this rucksack and I walk around Hangzhou with this rucksack and every so often (laughs) drink and then, but it tasted absolutely disgusting. I have to say, and I know I'm not very proud of this, but it reminded me of when I was a very young man trying to impress my, my friends and we'd do these kind of stupid drinking games and a friend of mine poured ash from an ashtray into my drink and made me drink. And it tasted like tobacco. Um, later on, I got it translated. And a friend of mine said, you you, you really don't want to know what's in it. But um, I tell you what, for nine months afterwards, I felt fantastic. And yeah. my migraines lessened, like really reduced a lot. Very good. And was scorpion, I think, was one of the ingredients Mm. But it was obviously a blood cleanser, you know, like yeah. you think about what a scorpion blood, yes. do. And obviously clearing out the gallbladder and the liver and things like that. Um, and then later on, it was through Qigong that I managed to to work and, and I, I maybe get one migraine a year now, but I was getting them like every day. Um, and I said to my Qigong instructor, I said, <laughs> I said you know, uh, teacher, you know, can you heal me? Fix me, teacher. And he went, no, not going to do that. Why would I do that? Go home, train. <laughs> Come back to me in two years if you're not better. <laughs> As if to say, like, you have to take responsibility. You can't mm. just all just be, you know. I mean, if he did that, he, his, his life would be gone because there'd be like a five-mile queue of people outside his door wanting to be healed. And he said, the best thing you can do is teach people to to heal take care of themselves, yes. Yeah. And I think the ultimate the ultimate healing is the healing that you do to yourself. So this is yeah. why the self-cultivation is very important. Yeah. I, I know that you're a practitioner of Neigong and Tai Chi. Yeah. Uh, I, does there a, did you follow, because I don't know if you're noticing this, there's a lot of Westerners, I'm going to say Western-style people, 
they're really now showcasing their ability at a very high level. You know, I think we're going through an acupuncture revolution lately. We now seem to be, with your help, going through a herbal revolution, although I think herbal revolution takes a bit longer because it requires – I have a feeling it's uh, – there's – you know, with acupuncture, if you already have an acupuncture skill, it's just about reframing how you do it. I think with herbalism, it's really uh, understanding the spirit of the of the plant and its energetic properties mm -hmm. and how it can interact and why it interacts that way. Um, but I'm noticing also, particularly in the Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan world, or even the internal world, where now I think it's necessary, there's a flourishing of Western practitioners really coming out uh, one of the guys I follow is, is is a Dutch guy, fantastic, lovely guy, works with kids with ADHD and stuff. And did you did you did you feel naturally that Tai Chi was a way of for self-nourishment, or were you already interested in doing martial arts? Or how did you stumble into that, if you like? Well, uh <clears throat> what got me into Tai Chi was my health, because what made me go to China to study Chinese medicine was that I couldn't move because I was asthmatic. Uh, I couldn't even do the stairs or walk or walk a little bit uh, fast. I would have like uh, asthma. So <clears throat> this is the reason I went to China because I wanted to cure myself. I wanted to learn something to, to cure myself. I thought at that time that was acupuncture, mm. but then I knew I met that teacher that told me uh, you cannot run, so better you do some more uh, uh, soft exercise, you know. What was soft was really very hard because it was chain style Tai Chi, okay. you know. Okay. So with very low stances, right. but the, the, it wasn't running. It was a low stancing to move, you know. And uh, I start to, to do that Tai Chi. For me, it was like a, like a, a ritual that I will do every morning with the teacher and every afternoon after classes, I will go, I will go to him. Uh, it was an amazing experience. And uh, one day in 1999, I, I just saw a bus and I ran to the bus. I ran to the bus and then I, I got up into the bus, I pay uh, and wait, there is something different here. Mm. And I realized that I didn't, I wasn't wishing. That run was impossible for me. Mm. I, wow, this is, this is wonderful. That very year uh, in summer, uh, uh, I went to a match, uh, to, to a competition uh, in, in, in Jiangsu, the province, and I got the second place. Wow. But I, you know, for me, it was like really because I wasn't very sporty because I couldn't do anything, you know. I I just could do maybe chess or something like that because I couldn't swim, I couldn't run, I couldn't do anything. And in Cuba, Cuba is a very sporty country. Yes, we have a very good sport in, in Cuba. So yes. I felt all my life as a kid like really depressed because I couldn't run, I couldn't do anything. So for the first time in my life, I was like, wow, I can do this sport, and I. So I also devote myself to to Tai Chi to my Chen Tai Chi, and it has been an amazing journey. I really, for all my patients, I when they ask me, what should I do? I always say to Tai Chi. Tai Chi is the best. Tai yeah. Chi is really very good, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, I, I never, I mean, I had one student who, who was doing Yang style, and he, he was showing me, he was teaching me some, some of it, but I never got really, uh, I was never really hugely drawn to Tai Chi. I don't know why. I was drawn to Qigong, Neigong. Uh, and um, it's it's super interesting. Um, I, uh, for me, I found the biggest thing was for my emotional health, uh, personally. Um, I was very fit as a young guy. I trained a lot, hard style, like you, martial, hard style martial arts and things. And then as I've got older, I've become... Uh, not as fit not as uh, cardio but i do enjoy mm -hmm. walking hiking mm -hmm. i do notice my body isn't as toned it's not as you know and, and and things like that but when i generate power i'm i'm like wow i wish 
I had that when I was 19. But mm. I think my, my, I, I think it would have been a good thing not to have it also because it would have been like overused and then burn out. <laughs> um, I would love to also talk a little bit about um, what you plan to do over the next while. I know you have been teaching online. We, we, we <clears> are looking at some stage to get you back to Ireland so that we can gather herbalists mm-hmm. around the room and try to get them to think about things that from a different perspective. And as you say, from a perspective that actually carries a lot of weight, it's not like some new age type of herbal medicine. This is something that uh, has been preserved, written, written down and preserved. Mm-hmm. Um, so what would be your plans for say the next two years, three years with, with this medicine? What, what would you like to see? Well, uh, we in 2016 we found the the Team Fan Classics Institute, uh, which is a branch of uh, uh, the Team Fan department in our university. I'm a I'm a visiting professor of uh, that department in China, and I represent in some way. I don't like to use that represent the that word. I'm I'm just an ambassador of yeah. my teacher, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, an ambassador of my teacher, <clears throat> and um, I have been spreading the word here in the in the Latin world, no, yes. especially in Portuguese, in Spanish, in Italian, in French. We have been, you know, cover all those. And then I went to Tali because I have a friend from China that he invited me to go there and have a huge group there yeah. of uh, gym fanners now, and uh, uh, then. Uh, we went into the English market, and then we started to 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 do some uh, speech uh, webinars. Uh, you know, just to 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 let people know that uh, we exist and that there is this wonderful system that is Team Fun. So then we decide uh, last year, well, we have to do we have to do a course also in English. I think that is what. So our course is. Um, is a two years course online, which is a very, I think that is, it's not that uh, heavy to do because every is online two hours each time. And in two hours, we give um, not so much uh, uh, things to, so that you can, you can study because the most important is not to study a lot of things, to study the, 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 the most important thing and that you can remember that, you know, and then you can study by yourself the rest. Uh, so in these two years, uh, we have we meet twice for three days. And in these three days, what we do is just to, to practice the clinical skills, which is palpation, abdominal palpation, which is very important in gene fun, mm-hmm. pulse palpation, which is very important in gene fun, mm-hmm. uh, observation also. In our system, we, we have a system that we, we respect the constitution. So we, by looking at the people, we know which kind of constitution you have according to the herbs. So yeah. we have a cinnamon constitution, for example. We have a danqui constitution, for example. Yeah. Different constitution. And uh, this is what we practice. We do face observation, tongue observation, uh, and so on. We see we see patients on those three days. And the most important also, we drink the herbs. So everyone has yeah. to drink the herbs. So that's those disgusting herbs that you you, you yeah, were yeah, yeah. saying. So everyone, because if you don't drink them, then you will never know what the patient yeah. will feel, you know. So so I think that is an amazing experience. Everyone that has go go through, through the through the course really enjoy it. There is people that repeat the course. One, uh, twice, three times. Yeah, because it's really interesting, and uh, we have been growing as a community. Uh, and then after the course, uh, uh, normally we go to China. Those people that finish, we go to China. We stay with the teachers and the students there in the institute, and that is also a beautiful journey because when you arrive there, uh, you can understand everything because we we teach. Uh, with the names in Chinese. So when the teacher say Huichitan or Shen Wan, 
you you are there. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. What we had, we had uh, Tanqui, we had Shanti, we had Pansy. You all understand. So the students are there that so happy that they can, they can understand what the teacher is saying. Yeah. And it's an amazing, it's an amazing journey. And yeah. and it confirmed when you go there, it confirmed that you studied the right thing, you know. And then you see the the, the 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 good results. It changed the clinic for many people. Yeah. You know, it yeah. changed the clinic for many people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah awesome. I, I I like the herbs that I teach. Um, I, I make the students taste. You know, and ours is a, a based solely on the tongue and urine and feces. So the movement of urine and stools. But I make them taste, and then they taste, and they can feel part of the tongue activated, and yeah. then know, oh yeah, I'm going to the right organ. Or I'm going to what's called the Long Juan, or there's a yeah, 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 kind of thing. So uh, it's an interesting way of doing it. Um, mm. And then in terms of like, uh, I'm aware also that you practice acupuncture, and I know we've we've met each other before. Um, is that, and I know we've not had a full discussion about this, but you you do enjoy using um, kind of a Japanese style, which actually really probably is rooted in China, isn't it? Because a lot of the Japanese style acupuncture really is a, is a snapshot in time of the thought processes that were being transmitted. Um, and so I know we talked about some kind of yeah. uh, Miko style acupuncture. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I really like uh, Japanese acupuncture in general, and um, especially uh, Kiko, 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 Kiko style. Kiko, Kiko style is, I think, is it's really very good with uh, very good clinical results. Yeah. And what I liked of the styles, like, uh, for example, Kan acupuncture also, or uh, Tung acupuncture, is yeah. the simplicity. Things have to be simple and yeah. without many theory around. You know, if you put too many theory, then this is not the real yeah. acupuncture. Yeah. So acupuncture should be simple and should be based on palpation words. You have to palpate, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. Kiko Masumoto have a lot of palpation, um, and I think have a uh, amazing clinical results. Yes, yeah. and it's yeah. easy to learn us. Yeah, it, um, I um, recently last year made friends with a chap called Slate Burris, and Slate wrote a book called Neoclassical Acupuncture, and he he said he pretty much spent three years, four years uh, at college in an America, bored, <laughs> totally bored, and daydreaming. And every single moment that he could get over those four years is he'd sit in the library and read Kiko's work. He was totally and utterly in love with her, in yeah. love with her work, thought she was mad, but super, super cool. And he escaped off eventually to Mexico, met his wife. And through doing consistently this style mixed with tongue, he has created his own system after treating 40 or 50,000 of the natives. And he said, in, you know, in Mexico, they don't have money. You know, there's no, he didn't do it for money. But um, yeah, it's a very interesting. I definitely recommend having a look at that. The theory probably correlates very closely. A lot of abdominal palpation. Yes. Um, and confirmation. Yeah. So the same yeah. as people like put the needle in, feel, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yeah, well, it's done. Um, yeah, and I'd be I'd be super fascinated to to learn a little bit more about that myself. So let's let's try and set that up in Ireland. And I'm going to invite people that are listening to this who are interested in that style. It's not necessarily purely Kiko, but to learn an approach uh, yes. that she has set down, um, we we can arrange for that. Obviously, in Ireland, people like their bank holidays and they like their holidays and time with the kids. So it's all about timing um, to get to get that done. It is a busy year, uh, so we'll have a conversation offline about that. Yes, and also I'd be absolutely fascinated if you could, at some point, take a look at this very weird. Oh, it's not showing itself today. You can't really see it, but uh, I have this weird skin thing that's appearing in the liver gallbladder region here. Yes. Uh, on the pericardium region. It's like a rash? Yeah, it's like a rash. I thought it was like from the cat <laughs> or the dog. Uh, it's been maybe here for, I'm going to say a year, and it comes and goes. 
Um, so maybe you could take a look and do a diagnosis and we can test Jing Fung and report back to everyone. I can give you the details. I thought it was maybe emotional because I was, mm. I was uh, worried about my son and his yes. his, his life. And maybe this is this we call that a flaring, a uh, fire flaring. So normally, when you have this emotional, it's a uh, it's, it's it's correlate to a, an emotional uh, feeling. Yeah. So yeah, and it flares up. Uh, this is uh, mostly it's a Shaoyan disease. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So and yes. it's not it's not anywhere here, like there's nothing here. It's literally like you could say here. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, back, yeah. the back where the liver is here, yes. the ribs. Yes. And then literally on the pericardium channel, more on the left where the actual yeah. heart is. Yes. Um, and it's really it's not itchy, it's weird. Uh -huh. it, no, I know it's there. So I, I mean my body space herbs didn't didn't get it so maybe jing fun can can do something with that so if your your pulse is wiry uh -huh, mm -hmm. which is uh, some then then it confirms that it's maybe the show and and uh and then uh see our childhood and that for me will be the best in that case so <clears throat> uh but for me, it's very difficult without going and yeah, sure. palpating the, the abdomen, you know, well, palpating the, the pause. Hopefully <laughs> we get to meet and uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a case like with, um, with Jing Fun, you, if you, I mean, I, I noticed this with some of the more classical herbs is you, you've really got to keep monitoring and adjusting, adjusting the yeah. focus slightly. You know, it's yeah. the same with body space. Every ten days, I adjust. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back, yeah. Adjust. Absolutely, we will. We very, very few times we we do like uh, they do in the West that they give the herbs and then eat this for a month or two months or three months. Mm -hmm. um, very few times we do that. We always have to to see the patient, prepare the pulse, prepare the abdomen, and there has to be some some changes. Then we change the the formula. Yes, and this is something that uh, Chinese medicine can do very well. Yeah. Chinese medicine can feel those changes very, very, very slight. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm aware we're coming to the end of the podcast. Is there anything else you want to talk about? You want to share with the people watching? Any messages you want to give to? Well, um, yes, yes. I would like to 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 tell people that uh, you know if you. If you really want to study uh, and be devoted to, to, to an art, spend time. Spend time in your, in your art. Chinese medicine is a beautiful, it's a beautiful art uh, that needs to be uh, nurtured. And you, you nurture that art uh, going into, uh, um, going very deep in it. Normally what, what the people do in the West, sadly, is to go to many different schools, different people, you know, and they don't spend time in one teacher, you know. So nowadays to study uh, one technique for two years, three years, four years, this is, this is almost impossible. No people want to do that. You, no people want to devote themselves to that. So what people do is they go just for a weekend and that's it, you know. They think that they bring something home. So... This is my my advice. Devote yourself to 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 something, to an art, or to a teacher, and spend time with that teacher. Spend at least three years, four years, five years, mm -hmm. because this is this is how we did it. You know, I'm following my teacher for twenty two years now. The same teacher. I haven't changed my teacher, and yeah. I can tell you that every day I find something new. Every day I find something new. You know. Sure. Sure. So this is this is an advice, a sincere advice, and uh, I think that uh, as my professor say, my, my teacher says, um, you have to hold one needle in this hand and you have to hold a herb in this another hand. Mm -hmm. Then you have the medicine, and then you walk with it. The walk is your nago, your uh, nutrition, you know. So yeah. all those things have to be together. So medicine is not just about one thing, yes. uh, you know, one acupuncture. You have to nurture 
so many things. So medicine, medicine is is something that you have to be devoted and you have to spend time in studying so many aspects of it. So, yeah, that's a really good message. It it reminds me of something I was listening to yesterday, uh, and it was a discussion over Chinese medicine and how. Uh, there are differences between, say, Southeast Asia in general and China as a mainland. But um, there are definitely uh, what they're noticing now in 2023 is you have obviously people out in the country practicing folk medicine, kind of not really allowed, but they do it. You then have the hospitals, which are very regulated and you have to be a doctor. And then you have these kind of smaller private in between places and sometimes in those places you find the master absolutely he or she does negong taiji yes. they do practice herbalism they probably have a love of tea they're great at acupuncture and they probably do twina cupping gua sha yeah you know and they're uh they live the medicine rather than show up to the hospital work for the week and then go home at the weekend and let go these people are every day reading self-cultivating and these clinics you find are jammed they are packed yes. i've even been to a few where people have been sleeping on the street at 6 a.m yes. waiting for them to open i'm sure you've experienced this right absolutely, absolutely. and i think i would love to see that in europe i'd love to see that kind of approach in Ireland, whether it'll ever happen, yes. or no. Yes. Maybe it will definitely happen in Portu Portugal. Yes. Like Portugal is very advanced in its mindset, but yes. it's just getting people to to walk forward and step forward through the door. And how you do that is through results. So I recommend definitely you check out Celestino. Um, we have he you can check out his website, celestinowong.com. Um, is there any other I know you're the on Jin Fan Classics. The Jin Fan Classics. Classics is probably the better resource. Yes. And yes. it's in English, Espanol. No hable Espanol. <laughs> I have a little bit of English. Um, I have a funny joke to tell you about, about that. I got arrested in uh, Spain once for uh, bringing too many Really? Cigarettes. It was an accident, <laughs> bringing too many cigarettes across the border for friends. But a um, long time ago, they let me go. They realized I was a fool. But uh, yeah. I'd love to come to Portugal and visit you here. Do you know if yeah. when you're going to come back to Ireland at some point? Uh, soon. I will go back soon. Yes. Yeah. I will, I will let you know. Yes. I let will me let know. You know. You'll be more than welcome to come to my humble abode and you Thanks. can you can bounce me around the place with your Fajin. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks to Celestino. Very blessed. Thank you a lot. He's an amazing person. He's a living library. Check him out. Reach out to him. He's on Facebook, Instagram, and his website. And Excellent. hope to see you soon. Thank you for joining. <laughs>